My name is Stevie, and I like to write songs. This is episode three of Making a Song Inspired by Black Sabbath. Let's see if we can finish this song today. Let's go. Let's have a listen to where we finished off the last day.
Okay, cool. I'm happy with it. It's going well. Just a couple of wee things we're going to do first before we get on to my ideas for the guitar solo. I don't think this winter of our discontent should go twice. The season of the season. Okay, cool. So what I was thinking, after we finish the second chorus, we go back to the main rough here. Before it goes into the middle eight, I think I should do a small short guitar solo there before going into the main solo after the middle eight. So let's see what we can come up with for that first. Let's work on that now. Right, this is going to be a reasonably straightforward little guitar solo here. I am tuned down to D standard, but we're talking about playing in the key of D minor, which would probably mean in Black Sabbath terms, we're probably going to use the first box of the pentatonic on the 12th fret. <laughs> that and one of the little black sabbath habits that I, that comes into my ears as soon as i hear playing over that riff is this idea that he does so we'll do that probably to introduce the guitar solo something like that and then some these double stop type things See what something like that would sound like in the track. Something like that. Take one more wee stab at trying to come up with ideas. Right, let's have a go. Let me hear a little bit of context for that guitar solo to see how I feel about it. You know, it would be good if the backing track sort of came down a bit. It feels like the rhythm guitars are sort of playing rhythms that are making them too in the front of the guitar solo. And maybe I should simplify the riff or something, do something with the bass guitar that kind of pulls the backing track into the background and lets the guitar solo come forward. Let's see if I can come up with something like that. Okay, so that's a nice basic variation on the main rough. I pulled the volume back on the guitar and played it more as chords rather than a rough. And I let the bass guitar do some higher slides. So it sounds like a slightly different version of the rough, but it helps to make the lead guitar sit further forward in the mix. I like it. Right, so I think in the next guitar solo, we could maybe just do the main rough again. So that before the middle eight, we have a slightly less heavy version of the rough. And then after the middle eight, we go back into the main rough full steam. So I'm guessing about maybe four repetitions of the rough before we move on to something else. Just make sure I copy that across. Yeah, cool. So let's see what we can come up with on the lead guitar for this part. In some Black Sabbath songs, Tony Iommi plays over just the bass guitar and drums. And then in other ones, he plays a rhythm guitar and then overdubs the lead guitar afterwards. Obviously, this causes a slight issue live because then he can't do that live. But I've chosen to do that here because it does, it does kind of add more girth to the track. Let's have a jam over the rough and see what I can come up with.
something like that. Right, let's break down all the little parts in the solo and see what I did. So in the first short guitar solo, we start off with this motif. So I'm hammering on from the 12th to the 14th on the D string, then playing the B and E string open, and then doing this thing where I'm playing both the 12th fret on the high E and the 15th fret on the B string, and bending the B string up until it matches. But it's very important that you do it quite slowly so that you get all those little beats in the sound in between and it sounds really discordant, like this. And then in the next section we do a little blues thing that's up here in the 12th pentatonic box. And then we go into a very straightforward kind of blues double stopping idea. So what's happening here is that I'm playing the 12th fret on the G string and the B string, but slightly bending them up. Not bending them up a full semitone, just bending them up a tiny bit. And at the end we just do that kind of thing again, going up the scale. In the main guitar solo, we start off with a palm muting thing, where I'm doing the 12th to the open palm mute. So the same thing again, playing both the G string and the B string together, bending them up. So to get the proper blues sound in it, you sort of want to do a quarter note, you don't want to do the whole semitone bend. And then this run. So I'm using a little trick here called sequencing, where it seems like I've played an extended run, but I've actually just played the same thing over and over again, going up a string each time. So on the first string, and then in the next string, and the same thing again on the next string. And we had no more strings to go up, so I just repeated that one. The next part is a thing called pedal tone, where I play an open E between each of the parts that I play up here. So, so that's just basically going down the pentatonic scale. And then recapping the sequence run, but without the sequence. And then I finish the guitar solo by going back to the main riff. The main riff is like this. So I just harmonize it up and up and up. So we start off, then up a third, then up a fifth, then back up the octave, then up another third, then up a fifth, then up the octave, and we finish off with that. So the whole solo,
So that's it. So let's hear that solo coming out of the middle eight. So kind of going for that sort of stoner, sludgy kind of vibe that Black Sabbath quite often have, and I think that was reasonably effective. I keep hearing that maybe we should blossom now the song into some kind of big melodic grand finale. Maybe some kind of thing where the guitar just plays a very straightforward melody rather than a guitar solo, and that kind of builds us up to somewhere. Let's see what we can come up with. Maybe the lead guitar could just play the same thing in unison, but maybe go up the octaves. Let's see what that sounds like. That's cool. But I had an idea. I heard something that came into my head as I was playing that. What would Ozzy do? Ozzy would probably sing along with that. I think that might sound really nice. Like the way live he sometimes sings along with the outro guitar solo in Warpigs. Let's try that and see what it sounds like. I think it'll sound pretty cool. <laughs> I hope this feels as cool now listening to it as it did whenever I was singing it. It felt pretty cool. Yeah, that's dark, man. After that, I think one of the obvious things that could happen is to go back to that section. Right, that sounds cool. I thought of another thing that's been playing in my mind that 
you hear quite often in guitar solos of Black Sabbath, and I think for the sake of it, we should try and put it in as well, maybe. I'll show you what it is on the guitar. Right, so there's this thing that you hear quite a lot in rock and metal, and it's this idea of an ostinato that gets repeated over a changing bass line. Something like maybe this. Um... I'm going to try and write something like that for the end of the song because I think it would be quite nice. I know there's a lot of Black Sabbath style things that do it. And I was also thinking that the chorus... <laughs> ...sort of has that. So the first thing would be to copy up the chorus. Okay, so let's see if anything sort of feels right. It's definitely a Pam Yuri thing that I hear from Black Sabbath. Let's do that. You know, I was wondering as well, sometimes he puts on a special delay on the, the lead guitar as well, and I wonder would it, that sound nice in it? Let's see if I can make a new guitar with just a little bit of extra delay in it. So I've set a delay to quarter notes, and I've turned up the mix quite a bit and turned down the feedback quite a bit, so we don't really get too many repeats, but they're quite loud. You know? And it sort of sounds like this. Let's stack that down. And then we could probably go back to this section that we tried earlier on. And there, instead of it going... Could go back to the very start. Yep, yeah, just that section. Right, before we call the song finished, I want to look at some viewer comments. We have a comment here from Leonardo suggesting to make the left and right vocal a bit louder. I suspect you might be right about this, Leonardo, so let's try that and maybe have a look at the bass guitar sound and make it a wee bit more like Black Sabbath. So let's just try those two things. I don't really want to get bogged down too much into getting the production to sound like Black Sabbath. It's more about the songwriting style, but let's just do it anyway for a bit of fun.
So the first thing that I've done here is I have imported an actual isolated Geezer Butler bass track. Let's have a listen to that. So let's try and do an ozone tone match on it with my bass guitar. So we'll put the two of them into a subfolder and we'll add ozone. So we'll do the match EQ feature in ozone. So what we want to do is capture Geezer Butler's bass track. So this is capturing the spectrum of what his bass sounds like. That should be enough. And now let's do the same with my bass. We can turn off smoothing completely and we can put the amount to 100% and that should be a good tone match for Geezer's bass. Now of course I play with a plectrum and there's no way around that because I'm shit at playing with my fingers but that should sound a wee bit more like his in the track. So that's what the original bass sounded like. A lot more aggressive. Okay. So we can lose all this stuff now. I'm going to just place this onto the actual bass track just after the amp models. Let's try and place this new sounding bass guitar into the track. Right, so what I want to do, maybe, is apply that a bit less. So we'll smooth it out a bit. So that's the original bass. You can hear a bit of a grind coming through. And it's smoothed out now. Okay, that was maybe worth doing for a bit of fun. So let's have a look at these vocals now. So what I've got at the minute are three vocals, center, left and right. And if we make them all the same volume, would be my suspicion, and then mix them into the track. So I'll bring these up until they're the same volume as the center track. And they'd probably all be too loud now, so I'd probably have to take all three of them down a bit. Okay, that's slightly more affected. So those two little tricks brought us maybe a tiny bit closer to the Black Sabbath sound. Right, I think we did it. I think the song's finished. Let's have a little listen to the whole thing from the start to the end now and see how I feel about it. Have I succeeded in evoking the spirit of Black Sabbath? Looking forward to this. Let's roll with some Black Sabbath. Yeah. Turn the volume up.
Enjoying it. Great song. Right, the new bats from today are coming up now. Back to the start, the very end. Yes! Yes! So, that was cool. I enjoyed myself exploring some Black Sabbath style influences today. And we got a new song out of it as well. So what more could you want? Cool? Awesome? I love the songwriting. I do. I love songwriting. It's class. Right guys, I hope you found that interesting and useful, and if you did, please remember, like, subscribe, buy me a coffee so that I can go out at the weekend and drink beer. Do anything you can think of to help support the channel and help me grow. I'm trying to get the word out about this channel, I'm trying to get more people listening and watching and following along. So anything you can do to help, much appreciated. If you watch this series the whole way through, then awesome, thank you so much. I can't believe you've got that kind of attention span. That's a, You're a nerd. You're a nerd. Just like me. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. I put out a video like this every Monday. So stay tuned for the start of next week's series. I wonder what it could be. Who knows? Let's wait and see. You guys rock.